partners, the partners. But then, of course, when you add in the kids, the parents, and the in-laws, the holidays can get kind of ugly and awkward, right? So our friend Dr. Deb Gilboa recently stopped by with her insight into cutting all the drama. Thanks for joining us. I'm by so the way. happy to be here. It's funny. It's like everybody's got that one weird uncle, uh -huh. or the and if it's just grandma, one, if it's just thing. one, consider yourself lucky, right? Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Most so, of us have more than that, yeah, right? It's, exactly. it's funny too because it's not always the silly things that happen. Those might be fun to remember, but what about when there's a real issue during family get-togethers? You know what that? Absolutely. Holidays bring out people's addiction. They bring out people's fears. They, I mean, they can really bring out the crazy. Yeah. And it is an opportunity for us to choose. Do we have to shield our child because it's so damaging and so dangerous and so awful? Or can we start to teach them how we deal in the world with difficult things and be a little bit resilient when tough stuff yeah. happens? And I would guess that you want a little balance of both, right? You do. You know your child and where they're at right now, but they are going to, quicker than we know, grow up and be facing these kind of issues in their peer group and among coworkers. And so right. this is our chance to talk to them about it. And that can be the hardest thing for us is yeah. to talk to them about the stuff that makes us uncomfortable. And I think knowing when it's okay to talk to them about it, because it can be hard for kids to understand what's going on when there's something uncomfortable happening. So how do we as parents or even as adults or someone there, how do we explain it to them so they understand? Well, you know, I'm always surprised by how much kids notice. I think we all are. So a great way to do it is to ask them a question, like a pretest at school. Say, okay. hey, mm -hmm. what, what struck you about that dinner conversation? Or what did you notice? What was most strange to you or most interesting to uh -huh. you? Yeah. See what they tell yeah. you, and that gives you a great starting point to talk to them about what you observed or your ideas or their feelings, whatever comes up. What do you and think are, are there any signs that parents can look for in children that will alert them to say, hey, they're feeling very uncomfortable about this situation or they need more explanation? You know, it's a great question. I think one of the best ways to know is to watch how your kids greet or say goodbye to people in your family that you're nervous oh, about. Ooh. Don't make yeah, kids kiss one. or hug. If their bodies are theirs and we want them to be able to say no to certain things, we should not make them kiss our family members yeah. or hug our I family I do members. that all the time. Well, and grandparents make them do that yeah. all the time. Come yeah. give me a sugar kiss. You and know? grandma can be scary yes. sometimes. Let's just say. <laughs> Absolutely. But when we say we want our kids to know that no means no. So okay. we can say, hey, find a really respectful way then to greet that person. You know, it let them know like with your really words. Good. It sounds like it's a lot of preparation, right? Because avoiding the conflict, sometimes that can be impossible. So yeah. the question is dealing with it so the kids aren't scarred from the situation. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, is preparation key? Is it wise to stay away from the family function if you know something mm. bad's going to happen? Like, what, If you, you know? know for sure that there's going to be danger and drama and you feel like it is totally above your child's pay grade to have to deal with that, then it's okay to say, hey, for our nuclear family, we're taking this opportunity this year to just be us and, and reconnect. Okay. But in general, this is our chance to be with our kids while they start to face some things that are a little bit more difficult so they can see how we handle it, they can talk about their feelings and understand that they don't have to brush it under the rug, pretend nothing's going on. Well, and I love the way that you say that because as Jada has taught us, it's a reframe. So instead of looking at this situation like, oh, I don't know what Uncle Joe is going to do this time, you're like, you know what, let's look at this as an opportunity to yeah. learn and deal with the situation. I Stay away it. from the eggnog. No, right? <laughs> don't drink anything he's been drinking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But I think it's good. It takes the fear out of it as well. Because if it's unknown, we don't know what to think. So at least exactly. if somebody talks about it. And it's okay idea. to use humor. It's okay to come up behind that eight-year-old who's mm -hmm. watching something happen okay. and whisper mm -hmm. in their ear, oh, this is a little bit nuts, right? We will talk about it in the car. <laughs> but see, that's a great. I always say use humor to deal with a really tough situation. Yeah. I think it's perfect for kids it's as like well. It's like you're letting It's a great tension breaker too. for yeah. them. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it bonds you tighter. They know you're the go-to person if something difficult is happening. Good stuff. Ooh, I Thank like you it. so much for all of those tips. They're amazing. You guys do not miss Dr. G's new book, Get the Behavior You Want Without Being the Parent You Hate. Love that. So good. It's in stores now, or you can send your specific parenting question to her through her website at askdrg.com. Thank you again. Thanks, you guys. It was a pleasure to be here.